just after 12 o'clock. This is the oil stream here on Edmonton Sports Talk on TuneIn, on iHeartRadio, EdmontonSportsTalk.com, as well as those watching on YouTube. Adam Wanik, Tom Gazzola with you here. Lots to get to it today, including should the Oilers have IT, LTIR to Evander Kane last oh year? Oh, my God. <laughs> we are continuing that all show. I'm out of here. No. Uh, inside joke for those who were listening to the oil stream a well couple played. days ago. Um how are you today? I guess I I'm, I'm good. good. We should talk about what we were just doing the hey, last 20 minutes. Let's. What a Friday. That's how we're starting with what this. What a Friday. Great hangout. Grummy was here. Glue guy Jay Milne was here. Uh, okay, before we get continue. Gage was here. I guarantee Grummy likes doing this, I'm assuming. I don't know him that well, like as well as you do, and Eric grew up with him. Yeah. He did news for so long. It must. He must feel nice that he gets to talk a little sports every so often, I think. I think so. Him and Tom Vernon, when we had those two in. Tom Vernon and Grummy are excellent. And, and I'm not going to lie, though. Like, they might like talking about sports. I'm reverse. I wish I had their jobs back in the day. Not going to lie. Wow, like that's just who sad. I am. So, um, and then Jeremy Thompson great. just stopped yes. by from CTV. Uh, if you're watching CTV later tonight, you might see a handsome face on the news. Ah, and we're not talking tough. about mine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, good to catch up with Jeremy. Um, and uh, yeah, nice to be. But so we've been talking about Birdie Juice. Yes. We're partnering with Strathcona Spirits. Yes. Smitty's here. We did a little bit of testing. That was I've awesome. got the voting that we have on this sheet of paper that you can't see, and even if you could, you wouldn't even understand. Mm -hmm. um, we tried a few. I think overall, we enjoyed what we tasted. It was very encouraging. Uh, Brian Schmidt, you, you might know him. He spent a lot of time with Sea Change, now with Strathcona Spirits. Uh, Schmidt and I went to high school together, actually. We've known each other for a long AOB. time. AOB! AOB, what up, Saters. Crusaders? Yeah. And uh, so, obviously, uh, we're excited to, to get into this partnership, and we got to taste the EST Birdie Juice. We also had a chance to see the potential finalists for the labels for the Birdie Juice, and yes. Schmitty was very encouraged Today's the, the last day to get those labels in. Yes. We looked at a few of them this morning, yep. and there's some really good labels that we're going to have to choose from. Excellent labels, actually. But the... Birdie juice itself. We had three samples today. All of them were honestly awesome. The way that they attack your flavor mm -hmm. palette is is different and in itself kind of neat. Uh, I think we together we right as a one. consensus consensus found the right one. Sans Dusty, and I think Dusty, regardless. I think Dusty would agree with what we went with. Yeah. Um, I think so too. Actually. Like, look, who, who, everyone that tasted it today was. Who do I have? I got Glue Guy. I got Zach to come. Who, who, by the way, Zach to come's last day officially as a practicum student. All right. Now he's going to have to earn yeah, it. His practicum comes to an end today. All right. So well done, Zach. Uh, we've got Tommy. I just have a T, so I'm to try to figure out who's Holler. who. Uh, Eric, Gager, Trev, and myself. Yeah. And. Of that group, though, like the Gator. part of this, I look at this and I look at this, though, as like the birdie juice. We're, we're having that little golf feel to it, right? Absolutely. Of the seven of us, you and I are probably the, the, the top guys who like golfing more than others. Yeah. We I agreed. He enjoys it. Yeah. But he's not here. Right. Right. And that's, and we went with, I think, the fact that we came to get away with saying the same thing. Right. Really speaks to like we came about it the right way. And I don't know if Schmitty is a golfer himself. I think Schmitty's a golfer. Schmitty, you golfer? A golfer. Yeah, yeah. Yes, a golfer, see, so the so three golfers yeah. kind of all walked away with the, we feel good about that one. Come in here, Schmitty. Yeah. Here is Brian Schmidt yeah. from Strathcona Spirits. Hey guys, do we have, do you want the extra? I can money? put a quick. Here, hang on. We're going to get you in here. You want to come on for a little bit? Sure. This is, uh, Trev, can you bring Schmitty a chair? This is a good opportunity to actually talk about this. Here, come on in, Schmitty. I'll slide this bad boy down. Okay, cool. All right, we'll get you in here, and we'll actually talk about this. You have a six o'clock or logger in hand. Here you go. Let me let, let, me, te let me test this here quick. Test make it sure out. This mic works. We'll get it sorted out. Anyway, if only we had time to plan this before the show, you know? This, you know test one, two, three, four. Yeah, this this works. This works. We're here. Uh, for those listening on TuneIn, iHeartAmbitsSportsTalk.com. Uh, we're bringing in someone in this. Uh, so for the mic, you got to speak actually pretty close to it. I'll just throw that out there. Okay, cool. Um, from Strathcona Spirits. Schmitty. Yeah. I guess that's where we're going. Schmitty. If you, if you went to Billiards Club back in the day, you knew Schmitty. 
Yeah. I found yeah. your old business card going through my stuff. Oh, yeah. Do you remember that? Oh, God. Those things were used as filters more than anything, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's 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 talk about what, we're talk- what we've got here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as you guys already know, we're, we're collaborating together with these beauties for uh, Birdie Juice this year. So from Strathcona Spirits and EST, uh, needed some input from the boys. The professionals uh, here at EST needed to tell us, you, you know, what we needed to add, what we needed to uh, change about it. So we've brought some samples through and uh, uh, yeah, got a couple of liquid to lips here. How's it? How's it looking, guys? I love all the taste. Yeah. I'm very encouraged by this, and, and I, I, you had to teach us about the berry, which I didn't know much about. It's a fusion, blackberry, blueberry, right? Like, how much can we discuss uh, about this? Why? Well, like, I think there's a level of. I think wraps? there's a level of a still like mystique we hold around right. this. Yeah, yeah. Let's keep it quiet. I mean, they can see this going on, yeah, but they, it they uh, on there's that. some ideas uh, that have been yeah. floating around, and uh, really appreciate everyone who submitted a uh, label design. That's really cool uh, to see some of those coming out. Yeah. Uh, very excited to have that, and then uh, hopefully in a couple weeks we get this out on the shelf and have a little party to celebrate it. It's a quick turnaround, and it's it's unlike the beer which you're you're enjoying on this lovely Friday. Mm, but God. hey, the Alley idea like good. when you you and I discussed it originally, like, where did it emanate? Like, why are we doing this? So, uh, the birdie juice idea really, to me, was golfing last year and just go finally getting a birdie and being excited <laughs> and then having to go through the punishment of some guys like, you know, 100-year-old scotch uh. that's just boiling in his bag for the last six months, um, having to take a shot of that, and you're like, this isn't a celebration. It's this is a punishment. So... I wanted to come up with something good, something the guys would enjoy, uh, something that's not, you know, too high uh, in booze content, but it's still like a good celebratory shot. And uh, you just gotta think, you yeah. just got that birdie, sun's shining, yeah, you're feeling good. What do you, what do you want to drink? Celebrate. Yeah. Well, how are you celebrating that? And like yeah. this, that's what that, that's yeah. how I was looking at, thinking about as I drank all of them. And that's why the one that I picked, like. I could just see myself. Yeah, that moment I get a birdie once every seventeen rounds. Yeah, yeah, I'm celebrating yeah. with this one. <laughs> and you're not getting hit with uh, that. Mm, yeah, that was good. Like I love a good shot of Jägermeister. I love uh, fire yeah, when it's ice cold. Yeah. When it's ice cold. Now, which isn't in your golf bag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I won't yeah. lie to you. Like I don't mind uh, a shot of something more juicy, fruity flavored. Not gonna lie, it's less harsh. Yeah, and absolutely. You talk about the old man scotch. Like I like scotch on the rocks, but I don't want it to celebrate a yeah good I, shot or a it, nice hole. And I want to get back to back birdies. And when you're burping up that old <laughs> scotch on yeah. your next on your next drive, and you're trying not to barf, it's tough. Yeah. So something enjoyable. Something that could go like, well with a hot dog too at the turn. Oh, you know? Yes. Oh, yeah. Like you're not drinking a scotch with a hot dog, <laughs> there, right? Like, give me another scotch. Birdie Johnny. juice pairs well with your uh, pork missiles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Excellent like use it. of pork <laughs> missile. But uh, the process behind this and and why it's so quick to to kind of get going. Yeah, is I mean, that part of the we sauce. Uh, a part of the secret sauce, but it is a vodka base, so we already produce uh, a couple. Uh, vodkas, um, and what we're doing is really just kind of mixing some local ingredients and trying to whip up something that's going to be, you know, fan friendly. Um, something that, I mean, a couple of small local Edmonton companies here can get together and and put out quick with the, you know, support of Sobeys, Safeway guys, and they, you know, mm-hmm. get it to people. We have a lot of excitement from other um, partners of ours that want to, you know, bring it on already and. Uh, get uh, some parties going. Yeah, really excited. Yeah. Um, you were talking about like how we were talk- discussing the strategy of the flavor profile, Maddie. Maybe we can get into that with Schmidt a little bit. Was like, I? Wh- yeah, like, <laughs> well, remember like the, the three samples that we oh, tried Oh, yeah, today. okay. Yeah. So, all. Uh, are we going too far? No, for talking about this, I don't know. That's I don't well, know. If, if like, we are, Schmidt, tell us. But. No, I mean, like, sa- are we going with numbers? Yeah, we can go sure. numbers. Because no one, yeah, no so, one's gonna really know. Number yeah. seven that we had was it had a little more of the alcoholic taste to it. Yeah, right. Right. Whereas six was the the, the flavor really hits you hard early. Yeah. yeah. But then eight kind of mixed the two perfectly together. Yeah. 
And yeah, you knew you were taking a shot. And yeah. And it was, yeah. It, it was everything you want. All in, like it, it was actually the best parts of six, the best parts of seven came together to make eight, which makes sense that it was number eight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're refining. We'll get to probably nine or ten by the end of it, but this is, I think, we're really, really close on eight, and the only tweaks we'll make maybe is like a little salt, a little pH balance on it, but besides that, it's pretty much we're really, really close to it. Because I would say right now if we put out eight, People would love it. I oh, so, hell so yeah. if you're gonna yeah. tweak that even more, oh, oh my yeah. god, I can't even imagine what that's gonna taste like. Uh, the the blue color. I know when you came in here about a month, month and a half ago. Yeah, he's like, I think we need something blue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was pretty uh, keen on the blue, and uh, I mean, yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be lights out, like uh, in your face kind of. Mm-hmm color and i think the labels that have come through yeah. matching those together like oh it's a home run for sure i, love it. Uh, I like this from aiden in the nasty chat what about bogey juice and make a lot of more yeah. of those you can make it b- yeah. bogey juice if you want yeah. that's yeah. actually a smart idea yeah yeah give Go- yourself a couple strokes and call the bogey a birdie sure yeah double bogey juice i won't be driving home after that <laughs> it's uh yeah three putt juice yeah oh, oh boy. god yeah. It's, it's yeah open to interpretation but yeah birdie juice uh for those that might not be familiar with strathcona spirits maybe give it a little background or two because this is a local <clears throat> company local distillery yeah. that you've uh, joined forces with obviously yeah no strathcona spirits started by adam smith uh good six years ago now almost seven and we our Edmonton's first distillery, believe it or not, a wow. uh, lot of regulation before us. So uh, when that kind of opened up, we were first to it and uh, been very, very fortunate to have support of the local area we're in and everyone else in Edmonton uh, on White Ave. Um, yeah, a little pink building behind the A&W on White is what I always describe it as. Uh, so just 81st and 101 Street and... We have done very well, award-winning spirits. The whiskeys are doing well. Uh, we have all sorts of things. Online, you can find all of our spirits. That you guys I brought should. some new gin, yeah. yeah. New gin. If you're looking for something to spice up your coffee, mm-hmm. check them out. Mm, oh, the velvet yeah. cream. That's, yes, that's Did you guys go through that already? It's in the fridge. Yeah, it's in the fridge. Oh. It's over there. I think uh, we dip into it. <laughs> we need a little, little pick-me-up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, what was I going to bring up with you? Yeah, the beer game compared to the distillery Mm -hmm. game, because that's where you came from before. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, the beer game is saturated. There's a lot of really, really good breweries in Alberta. Um, Doing very well, Alley Cat included in that discussion. And uh, when going to Strathcona Spirits, I was kind of thinking to myself, like, how many other distilleries are really around right now? And there's some really good ones in Edmonton and area. Uh, but comparatively to the brewery world, I think it's probably like a few years behind. Mm. Um, it never really got the uptake it did that beer got. And I think now I'm, we're seeing like the, you know, the excitement behind local distilleries, uh, excitement behind everything you can do with local distilleries. Um, a big part is whiskey. It takes, you oh, know, yeah. to be a Canadian whiskey, it's three years minimum. A lot of whiskeys in, on the market are way more than that, but... Uh, so yeah, that excitement is, is, is growing, uh, in just, you know, on the coattails of the beer, uh, and we're seeing like a lot more support around local distilleries, which is awesome, uh, especially from the, you know, the local shops around town. It's been really good. So, uh, you said Sobeys, Safeway liquor stores, obviously you're going to see birdie juice there, but they can already, people can already pick up Strathcona spirits at Sobeys and Safeway. Yep. Where else? If they're now, now, cause we're putting it in their mind and in their ears. Yeah, where do I go get it? Yeah. Uh, well, for the uh, online guy, you can just go right to our website, order right to your door. Uh, that's easy enough. We Strathcona have Thank you, yes. Yeah, we have our new line of products on there. We have sales once in a while. We have a lot of merch, all that kind of cool stuff. And then, I mean, all the local retailers, the Sherbrooke's of the world, uh, those guys will all carry us. But, of course, Sobeys has been a really good supporter. They carry a ton of our uh, our line, so it's great. For those not in Edmonton, it even says free shipping across Canada orders, orders over 125 bucks. So, boom. There, there you go. go. I'll Get drive it right now. across I'll, Canada right there. Yeah. You could jump in on Strathcona Street. will show up at your door. Yeah, I'll, yeah. <laughs> been doing trips to Regina all week. So, nice. yeah. No. Yeah, it's good. Uh Oilers get the right matchup taking on the Kings. Is I do think thing? so. I, I was, I was their, their talking to, yeah, I was talking to the guys outside, and I was like, "This is a blessing in disguise. Vegas is just so unpredictable. They can be just a battle of a team to go against." Yeah. 
I'm a little nervous about Talbot. He, really? He, he's going to fight us. He's going to... But he's a bad... Is he going to win four games against mm, the Edmonton Oilers? Probably not, but he's going to be a headache. He's going to stand on his head, head, and we've seen goalies stand on their head and win a series for teams. So it's my only kind of, you know, worry about this series, but we're hot. We're, we're like, look at the last three quarters of our season. Yeah. Like, we're... We're an absolute beast. Schmitty, they got spanked the last two games. Well, they're, they're, they're losers chilling. Losers of four or five. Losers of four, Let losers of four or five. What are they going to do? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Three games that I didn't know. mean a single oh. thing. We're being silly, but. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I don't they're think... on vacation mode. They're just hanging. Well, they're I, relaxing. Last year, it was, I always forget which one is, 15 or 18, 2 and 1 down the stretch. Mm-hmm. They lost game 18, one to the Kings. 18, 2 and 1. 18, 2 and 1. They lost to the Kings in game one. Yeah. Oh. They were as hot as you could be yeah. going into the playoffs last year, and they still lost game one to the Kings. And if it wasn't for Jack Campbell, actually, they might lose game three to the LA Kings. And that's yeah. serious. Who knows what that could be? So. Yeah, they lost four or five, whatever. That's our MO is to lose game one, though. That's yeah. just how we roll. <laughs> Sadly, yeah. Since 2017, uh, second round against Anaheim. Well, and even if, and then 06, they lost the the Hurricanes, Red Wings, and Sharks, I think, all in game yeah, one. But yeah. the Ducks in game one. Yeah. So like, even if you go that far, like, there's been two series since 05, 06 that the yeah. Oilers won the first round. We're a more We're mature a team, game. though. I think that's a young team kind of thing. Uh, I hope that the butterflies are out of their stomach. By game one this year, and it doesn't take till game two or no three kidding. to get those worked out because that's, you know, hard to sleep as an Oilers fan when you lose game one. You know, you're up till eleven thirty at well, night watching the game, and you're trying to go to bed after a loss absolutely. like that. Well, <laughs> you just get your birdie juice. I'll say this: eleven thirty at night, you ain't going to bed this year. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. ten o'clock, ten o'clock Easter. So yeah, eight o'clock, eight o'clock, eight thirty, eight thirty for games one, two, three, four. By the time puck drop actually happens, it'll be eight twenty two, eight twenty two, eight fifty, oh, eight fifty. Yeah. And if any of those games go to overtime, good yeah. night. Yeah. It's going to be great. S- schedule your meetings accordingly now. <laughs> That's the best part about the playoffs is that everyone just knows the next day. Oh. The city's just tired. Yeah. Just yeah. accept it. Deal with it. Yeah. Um, it's just how it's going to be. And that's and hopefully a long run with that. But also, if you're the National Hockey League, you have Connor and Leon. Yeah. Play them at 10 and 1030 Eastern time. That's how you showcase your game. Oh, doesn't like, make sense. Sunday, 28th, game four. You could play that earlier. Absolutely. It's you a could, Sunday. Uh, it's a Sunday. In, uh, you could play that earlier if you yep. can. You need to find a way to play that one more in the afternoon so that Connor McDavid and Leon Draisaitl. I, I get the other ones. Sure. But you got to find at least one where you can be like, hey, America, here's the yeah. best player in hockey in the playoffs. Yeah. Instead, the entire West Coast is already in bed by the time. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, we do have a couple of questions and thoughts uh, in regards to Strathcona Spirits and the Birdie Juice. MLP mm-hmm. says, my wife enjoys the Velvet Cream. Awesome. That's excellent. A big uh, Slam Nasty says, is Matty hashtag in one? No, I think he's keeping it, no. keeping it on the rails. I haven't, he's doing I haven't finished fine. my drink from the hangout today. Yeah. So it, I still haven't done that. And our shots that we had, like one They're just the shots. tiny little ones. Um, I don't think they were full shots, at least. Uh, there was a question yeah. here I want to get Psych. to. <laughs> Those are actually 60%. <laughs> <laughs> With this, is it just going to be uh, Mickey's, says Aiden, or will there be 750 milliliters too? Have, that, have you guys decided oh, on that good yet? Good question. Good question. Uh, we will likely roll out the Mickey's and see how it goes. Yeah, I okay. think there will be an answer to that demand pretty quickly if it need be, though. Uh, so, yeah, ask so for basically it. Basically, it's up to you. Yeah, you tell us. Uh, we listen and we act quickly. That's the beauty about being tiny. Nice. Yeah, because how long did it take to to oh. get the uh, like number six, let's say, from when you guys started brewing it and stuff to putting it in that bottle? About how long? Uh, a week. Jeez, yeah. Damn. Not yeah, not even. Uh, compared to the brewing world that is that I come from, is uh, a blessing that you know six o'clock runs out. Which I mean, obviously it will because it's amazing. Uh, they gotta wait, you know, three weeks. Probably four weeks, depending on uh, what they're doing. But yeah, I can do this by quickly. same time next week. Jeez. I like that. Nimble. And then uh, Northside Sandwich says, hey, if we stop by Strathcona St- Spirits, is there samples of it? <laughs> no, it's got to be keeping under wraps, lock and key. Nice. Uh, Come to the launch event, which uh, we haven't announced yet, but we will be announcing soon. And Come try it there for the first time and then go to your local Sobeys or our distillery and, and grab it. Pinto Creek says four liter. 
Mm. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been saving my milk jugs just for this. Oh my yeah. god! We'll do a limited edition. Yeah, yeah. Ones. we'll have a, a one of five you can buy. Yeah, my goodness. Yeah, that. drop your milk jugs off at EST. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just send Zach to come. He's doing milk jug runs. Zach to come. Oh, <laughs> uh, Schmitty, I think we're on to something here, pal. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I'm excited. I'm excited for the golf tournament. Tell me more. Oh, July ahead, 9th. Matthew. July 9th. We're down to officially two groups with EST slubs left. We've sold out of the regular foursomes at the moment. Uh, there's actually, I've actually now, I haven't really posted this fully. It's a, there's a link on our website, ES, uh, edmontonsportsdoc.com, EST Classic at the very top for a little bit of details. Um, yeah, July 9th, ranch. Awesome. Yeah. Those guys are great. So they know how to pump out tournaments and. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's moving along. So yeah, and they have the uh, velvet cream. Ah, yes. Case our, our North, North Side sandwich. Yep. Is that okay. who's wondering North about Side that? sandwich? Maybe you know North Side sandwich. Danny Katina. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure that's. Is Danny. that him? I think that's Katina. If Seriously? I'm wrong, let me know. But he like loves Chelsea Katina's he, her, well, brother, maybe family her brother-in-law. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Probably AOB. Is that, <laughs> that? That's not. I that, think. That? I think it's Danny. Oh no, I got to check wrong, the number. But anyway, I didn't know that. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. I could be wrong. Anyway, uh, awesome. Schmitty. That does sound like what his handle was at the old place. Yeah, I know. That's why. That's awesome. We're on to something here uh, with the label. You said you're gonna you're gonna try to get when we pick the winner. When is the winner being picked for the label, Matthew? Do you remember? Oh no, Schmitty. Do you know? Like we gotta have it Monday to print. To so Monday we'll be probably making the selection. To be honest, um, not set in stone. We gotta talk to Dusty, but. I think uh, he's on very, his phone. Very early next week, we awesome. will have an answer to that. Uh, we'll have a post up, and we will have this produced as soon as we can because there's a lot of people asking. That's for sure. Strathcona Spirits. Ca. Check them out, and then local uh, liquor stores and Birdie Juice is uh, well on its way. This is going to be super awesome. Schmitty. Yeah. Thanks for stopping by. Pal. Thanks, guys. This Appreciate it. Yeah, just leave all the samples with us. We'll yeah, I know. <laughs> Dusty, okay. if you're watching, I'll hide these for you. <laughs> yeah. I he doesn't need those. He better not be watching. I'll say that. He's on San Diego. Enjoy your time out yeah, there. Exactly. Thanks for uh, stopping by there. And Thank uh, you, guys. You, you'll, you'll side out. This is the oil stream uh, here on Edmonton Sports Talk, EdmontonSportsTalk.com. Uh, Tune in, iHeartRadio, uh, as well as for those watching on YouTube, uh, Matawanek, Tom Gazzola, as he slides out there. Yeah, you can move that. Oh, you're going to send that chair. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Oilers getting set to take on the Kings. Uh, that schedule has been announced, as you heard by Tom Gazzola over the last, like, two weeks. Thank you. Monday, it begins uh, taking on the LA Kings. Wednesday will be game two. I know we talked about it on two guys yesterday. There was rumblings of maybe the Thursday, but it's going to be the Wednesday for game two. Uh, Friday, game four. Sunday, or Friday, game three. Sunday, game four. Wednesday, game five. So that's where the break comes in this series. Yep. Between games four and five, an extra day off. Friday, May 3rd would be game six, if necessary. May 5th. Sunday will be a game seven, if necessary necessary uh we talked about it with them there um schmitty there did this go the way the oilers is this best case scenario for this i think i'm gonna take uh, the players out of this because we talked about this in the hangout the players don't care and this, this don't. team is good enough they're confident enough that they'll be like bring it on to anyone they should that workman like attitude yeah this path has just opened up for the oilers hasn't it turn that turn that bad boy off where's zach to come Thank you. Because it was you creating a hollow set. When you get that third mic in there, if you're oh. not directly oh, yeah, into well, the I could have brought that down. Nah, there we go. Okay. okay. Uh, I don't have headphones in anymore. Oh, yeah. Now it sounds very nice. Perfect. Yeah. Um, no, like, is it did the path, is this the best path the others could have asked for? Because, like, to me, I look at it and go, the Central is now just completely loaded. And, and I'm actually worried about the Dallas Stars coming through the Central as I would have had them as the favorite. Let them fight. I threw it to MACT a couple days ago on the hangout and said, Where's their weakness? And he said, there isn't one. And if Mac T's saying there isn't one, then there isn't one type thing, right? Like, he's, he knows better than I'll ever know. Yeah. And so I figured, like, that's the team that we saw what they did to the Oilers a few weeks ago. Great hockey team. But now you don't get a first round of the Kings or the Preds. You yeah. get the defending Stanley Cup champs you met last year in the Western Conference Finals. They beat you. And they're going to have Mark Stone come back. And, and there's going to be a huge battle that's going to come from there. That That's only round one. Then you get Avs or Jets. 
Um, I think it is favorable on paper. Now you need to take advantage of it on the ice. Yes. All right. Like you can keep tabs on it, but keep it at an arm's length and worry about the LA Kings. The LA Kings, keep in mind, will want vengeance for the last two springs. There's plenty of players on the Kings that remember the the last two playoff rounds against the Oilers and do want to get their piece and and finally beat Edmonton. Do they have the firepower to do it? Firepower, you could say, yeah, they have good offensive weapons. Uh, Quinton Byfield's now more of a factor. They have Pierre-Luc Dubois. Whether or not he shows up, we'll see. Victor Arvidsson's healthy, scored that big goal yesterday late in the game to tie it against Chicago. Goaltending still a question, obviously, but Cam Talbot will be motivated. Uh, the Kings' defense is decent. Like This is still a good L.A. Kings team, but Edmonton should, heavy emphasis on should, be able to take care of business, but they can't take their foot off the gas, Matty. Like, this is... Im- no. Go and take care of it. TCP, you have to. man. Well, hey, I said it a little bit just a few minutes ago. If Jack Campbell doesn't have that performance coming in relief in Game 3, Could have been a different the Kings might have knocked point. out the Oilers last year. Yeah. You know, we're not talking about them having lost to a Stanley Cup champs yeah. two years in a row. We're talking about that they got knocked out of the Kings. Uh, portions of this hour of the Oil Stream are brought to you by Popeyes. Things just get better at Popeyes as the new crispy chicken buffalo wrap is now available to a classic hand breaded and breaded, uh, hand battered and breaded mild chicken tenders with bold buffalo sauce paired with a fresh lettuce, tomato, and milder spicy mayo wrapped in a soft flour tortilla available in store or delivery. Um, do you buy into? It's hard to beat a team with three playoffs in a row. No. Why not? Because it doesn't matter. You do, you're I, not I'm supposed with you. to look at Why well, last year doesn't matter, the year before doesn't matter, does it piss them off? Yeah. I think if anything, it should make it should keep you on edge and it should make you leery that this team's still mad at you for beating them and ending their season last two years. Does it matter? What, what does it do with fate and the universe and all that? A lot of people are superstitious. Uh, I'm not even a little bit stitious, Matthew, but I am. Uh, I, am. I, I don't think it does. I Ultimately, no. And especially if the orders go with a straight ahead approach and look at their opponents, say, I don't care if they're wearing a LA Kings crest or a Vegas Golden Knights crest. The bottom line is you go out there and you win. Uh, you, you worry about attention to detail, game planning, strategy, all that stuff. It doesn't matter if you've beaten this team uh, a couple times in a row. I, I don't think it does, personally, but there's well, others out there that are probably thinking, yeah, it does. No, to me, it doesn't. Oh, it doesn't. Uh, to okay, me, no, I'm superstitious. Yeah. I am a superstitious guy for different things, but not for this. Like I look okay. at it and go, I don't care what happened last playoffs or the playoffs before. This is different. Yeah. This is a different, there's different teams, different players, changes have been made. I could have the, like, I'm the guy that sits there and says regular season doesn't matter yeah. as much going into the playoffs. But I could be here for the conversation of the idea of, let's say, the Oilers swept the Kings. I don't know what their season record was this year. Um, but one of those where if it's a sweep, I could I could have that. It's, you know, going into the playoffs. Can you just keep beating a team over and over and over again or something? Or same season type thing. When it comes to over a couple years, I don't think it matters. No. It's not three years in a row, but I was texting with my brother a few days ago on this. And I recalled like the New York Yankees own the Minnesota Twins. And the Yankees have never lost to the Twins. I wonder if we could find it. The Yankees have beaten the Twins in six straight playoff series. 03, 04, 09, 10, 17, and 19. Now, again, not three straight in there at all. But, but they've beaten them six straight playoff series. Yeah. The, you know, at no point that the Twins be like, well, history says we keep losing to this team. We're going to get them. Like, I, I don't think it matters. No. Uh, by the way, just really quickly, Edmonton 3-1 and one versus the Kings this season. A 4 nothing loss at LA February 10th. Um, right. no, like, and if you're the Yankees and you're looking at the twins, like, okay, well, we've got to beat them again, whatever. Yeah. yeah. And same yeah. thing. Flip, like, I, yeah. I don't think the Oilers, well, maybe there's a little more confidence when you're, I don't I, The people that have been there, I guess there's going to be the frustration and they're going to remember it. Of like course. Drew Doughty and that whole team that have been there last few years, they're going to remember the defeats. Yep. I don't think it just all of a sudden, well, it's their time because they've lost the last two. Our turn to win against them. No, it doesn't work that way. Would you argue that the Kings are a lesser team than they have been the last two years? I think they're more a stronger team. Do you? I think there's more depth on paper. Okay. Now, they have their flaws. Their flaws have been exposed in the last few months. The cost of their coach a job. And I think a lot of the vengeance mindset, too, came from Todd McClellan. 
I really do oh, think that's... that, and he was open in discussing it, wanting to beat the Oilers. That was something we discussed last year going into the playoffs, and they were built to beat the Oilers. They were built to beat the Oilers. Well, they lost to the Oilers in one less game last year, and you're right. You bring up the Campbell game where he was clutch, made some saves, some of them, you know, skill. Some of them, you get a little bit of luck on your side, and the Oilers came back in that game, and Hyman scores the OT winner. The Oilers solved Corpus Allo in that series, and that was a big thing. I I think they're worse goaltending. I do agree with that, but I do think L.A. has better players playing better than they did last year. Young guys with skill, more experienced, um, that, that they probably do think they have a puncher's chance of maybe beating Edmonton, plus a little bit of the revenge factor. So that should keep the Oilers on their toes. And good nervousness is, is – and that good nervous energy, I think, is beneficial if you're the Oilers. And I hope they have that and they utilize it properly. But do not take L.A. lightly just because you've beaten them three times this season and knocked them out of the playoffs the last couple of years. Respect the opponent. Always. You can't start looking – don't be paying attention to what's going on with the Canucks and the Preds. You just focus on your series until that one Straight is ahead. over. 780-218-9999, Parrish Jewelers Inbox. You could also jump in to the nasty chat. We're about uh, 10 to 15 minutes away from the keyword for the EST of Flyaway today. Your last chance to qualify today uh, here on Edmonton Sports Talk and another chance tomorrow. Uh, hello, hockey. And then we're into the final four days next week, giving the bad boy away on Friday. Hampton Steve, my heart says Oilers in five, but my, my head says the Oilers never do anything easy, so likely it'll be six or seven games. It's a fair point. Ontario Momes, boys, this isn't conspiracy bleep, but go and read the article about playoff teams that Chris Johnston and Daniel Nugent Bowman have shared. Uh, it actually says Daniel needs your Bowman have shared. I'm, I'm guessing ah, that is auto-corrected. Daniel or needs your Bowman. Daniel needs your Bowman. Uh, the Oilers are the only team that executives went into detail on how to beat them. Uh, what's up with that? Uh, I haven't read the article, but I don't know. What well, I would the say the Oilers is, are a team that a lot of people pay attention to because of McDavid and Dreisaitl. Well, there's that, and and maybe that just shows that some teams are scared of the Oilers. They all look yeah. at the Oilers, and that's a team that they don't want to go up against. Go prove everyone wrong if you're the Oilers. Go show the executives. Are you fiddling? What you doing you're over there? You're a fiddler. I've got the mouse. Get out of here. I'm good. I'm good. Zach to come. Oh, he came in and he was grabbing the mouse, and I'm trying to figure out what he was doing it's there. Fiddling. And it's I'm, I've got the controls fully here, so I don't know. What, We've got this. I don't know how Dusty does things here, but I, I take controls. At least you keep everything neat and tidy. Well, hallelujah. We're on video now. Yeah, I know. I do like some. These of us papers need to be here. I would have them over on my left, but I have this board. I know. But so they have to go there, unfortunately. Okay. So I hope that's okay. Uh, Northside Sandwich says, I am it's not, not who him. You think okay. I, I thought it was Danny, but uh, my bad, Northside Sandwich. I think Sandwich. when he texted in Northside at 1260, Sandwich. he had something like Sandwich in his name or Sandwich something. Sandwich Boy. And, yeah. And Danny's from the Northside, too. So I know. I, I thought, my bad. That's my bad, Northside Sandwich. Katina does listen to us. I know that because he's brought up a few things and he texts me directly sometimes. A couple good texts, actually, in regard uh, to everything here. Uh, B. Mother says, if the Kings, this is nasty chat, by the way. If the Kings beat the Oilers, their season's a success. They want nothing more than to beat Everton. I'm sure they do. An ultimate goal, obviously, Cup. Uh, Jesse disagrees, says he thinks the Pierre-Luc Dubois trade totally depleted their depth. I didn't like the Pierre-Luc Dubois trade. And you didn't like it at the time, too. I, st I still don't like it, but he can. It's kind of like a Vander Kane, like an engaged Vander Kane can be the X factor as a lot of people are discussing around town. And that's totally, I I'm on board with that thought process. I agree with it. And Pierre-Luc Dubois, when he wants to be a game changer, he can be, he has at the NHL level, but that's the scary thing is like, does the guy want it today? Does he not want it? What kind of mood is he in? Why can't he dial it in and be pro every single day? And we talk about consistency of being a pro. So it's a question mark at times. And, and I like Michael and Matteo. Uh, they, they kept I a follow, right? Mario, they sent to Winnipeg. I really like Velarde. So I, I, I'm still, I'm with you, Jesse. Like, I think the Pierre Luc Dubois trade wasn't great, but if he wakes up all of a sudden, he can be a game changer. That's just all the X factor. If you're looking at the X factors, yeah. I would say it's Evander Kane for the Oilers. And yeah, I think it would have to be Pierre Luc Dubois because if he shows up, 
and he becomes the player that the LA Kings thought that they were trading for. A lot of teams want that player. Absolutely. Uh, his playoff-wise, he's been in the playoffs five times. First year with the Blue Jackets, he had four points in six games. Second year, only five points in ten games. Yeah. Third year, ten points in ten games. Then with the Jets, he had three points in seven games. But then the l- last year in the playoffs, four points in five games. So he- he's 38 games played, 10 goals, 16 assists, third 26 points in the playoffs. Um, he's had three good playoff years where he was close to being a point-of-game player. The other two years, a bit of a dip. If he shows up like he did in those three years, the year they played, that helps the Kings big time. Yeah, he wasn't much of a factor. Uh, Dean, not afraid to share his opinion via the nasty chat. Says, yeah, Dean Belanger says, I kept waiting for PLD to become the X factor with the Jets. Never happened. Turned out uh, one good series became a large with a large frame and turned it into a payday, a big one. He is garbage. That's from Dean. I just look at the Kings and go, you score two goals, you're likely going to win the hockey game. You score three goals, it's over. Right. I don't see how they yeah. come back. And that's how I kind of felt the last couple of years is that if the Kings score one or two goals, yeah, the Oilers could still score. That's what yeah. scares me, though, is that they'll go and play it really tight, shut down that trap stuff. But if you can go get that one or couple goals early, I don't think the Kings have the ability to come back. did that in the last game against LA. And uh, Jesse, thank you for clarifying. I uh, said Matteo, I'm an follow. Matteo went to Vegas. I used to get the Je- them confused. Jets did a the Jets did a good job with the uh, Pierre Luc Dubois trade. I think their, they did their a great team. Job. They're looking really good. Uh, don't forget that once the Oilers playoffs gets going, well, there's two things to not forget. One, uh, the GCL Diesel Oil Stream Pre and Post Game Shows with Tommy. Uh, he'll be live on location at Hudson's Games One and Two. He'll be at Hudson's West Edmonton Mall Games Three and Four. Hudson's on White, which we were at yesterday for a watch party. Thank a lot of great out. nasties were out there for that yep. one. Um, but also that be sure to keep it locked on cool bet ride with Edmonton sports talk all playoffs long at cool bet watch for the EST parlays every game day only at CoolBet.com. I'm gonna have to message with Dusty to see if he's gonna be throwing the parlay up for Monday uh, or if I have to build one and um, I've got some ideas for Monday if I have to build one so I'm excited Mr. Lean, Mr. So I'm Lean. excited about if I have to build that one um, but I don't know if Dusty's gonna have something so I'll have to talk with him and the cool bet boys um, to see what we're gonna do but be sure every Oilers game they watch cool bet for those parlays uh, one thing that's great about a partnership with cool bet you could build the parlays that you want anywhere else but with cool bet they boost those odds you're gonna get those odds nowhere else just at cool bet so keep it locked to cool bet for that also, portions of this hour brought to you by 100.3 The Bear. Our friends over at our former place, uh, Yukon Jack, Scott McCord in the mornings. Uh, has anyone, actually, I don't know, has anyone been doing the mornings with them? I don't think Eric's still here. No. Uh, I don't know. Is if... Eric still here? They're not listening to Who's you. been doing the morning show with the Bear Boys? You guys, no one's doing it. Oh, you've been doing it? Oh, yeah. Oh, Eric's yeah. been doing it. All right, Eric. How much soccer talk have you gotten? None. Oh, None. no soccer talk. Bring up the white caps. Oh, my God. McCord, well, would, McCord love would love the white that. caps. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so listen to Lieutenant Eric Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday on the morning show with the, with UConn and McCord love for the, the Bear Sports Hit with uh, us here at EST. And then there's Jess Jackson in the afternoon. And She's awesome. I gotta They're all awesome, something. actually. I love those people. I love them. Hey, well, as you said earlier, uh, Jeremy Thompson from CTV was by. Stop by, yeah. Love the people we worked with. Always Grummy, have, Grummy always will. worked at CTV for a while. That's right. Still, it's it's fun as we're talking about the hangout, just yeah. the, the, the street that there was and how impactful it's been on Edmonton media. Those Saskatoon berries, man. Uh, should we get into the keyword? Sure. Okay. I just yeah, gotta... this is going fast. This is a fun show. We've had a good day at EST. Nice Friday for sure. I need. To, uh, I just need to get the keyword up here. I hope I can see it. It's I can read some text in the meantime. Yeah, actually, that'd be great. Let's go to Coach Mike. Says, do you guys think that Knobloch will start ninety-seven and twenty-nine on separate lines versus LA? Coach Mike, I hope they they do. I hope Chris Knobloch disperses them and tries to get a little bit of rhythm and momentum. But with him, as we've seen, it switches in game. Uh, he does one thing in uh, in a morning skate sticks with it for like two shifts and then switches it up. I do think that the LA Kings do have some depth now that they could command the Oilers into spreading things out with Dreisaitl and and McDavid. So I I think so, Coach Mike. 
if if we don't see that and he puts McDavid and Drysaddle together, maybe he wants to attack and go aggressive in game one and just take it immediately and reverse the fortunes of game one's well, past. Uh, okay, we talked about how much the Oilers don't win game one. How important is it for the Oilers to go get game one? I think it would be huge because it would put them at a mental advantage. Now, as we've seen in recent years, if they lose it, it's not the end of the world. Although, the way people reacted after game one of the first round last year, fighting with each other, which was dumb, uh, they imploded. But I, for the Oilers, I, I think it would be huge for them to put the Kings in a mindset of, oh, man, here we go again with these guys. Whereas the last two years, like, L.A. had game one. Mm -hmm. And Edmonton had to fight its way back, especially two years ago. I think it'd be huge. I really do. And, and maybe it puts L.A. into that back foot type of posturing. If the Oilers win game one, it's a short series. Think so? Four, four five. five. Done. I don't think the, I think the Kings will go. Here we go again. This isn't this isn't going to be for us. This team's got our number. We don't got this. I'll, I'll say that right now. If the Oilers take Game One, calling it, it's going to be very serious for this team. Yeah. They move on. Cozy, hold says, me to that. If I'm wrong, come at me. Come at me, bro. Uh, Cozy says maybe I missed this conversation, <laughs> but what are your line combinations? I don't know. Like <sighs> probably something similar to what we saw at the end of the season: Nugent Hopkins, McDavid, and Hyman. Dreisaitl with Fogel and Henrik, uh, Perry and Kane with McLeod down the middle, and then obviously Yanmark, PK duties, uh, I don't Carrick, and then uh, Brown on the fourth line. What's the strength there. of the Jets? Or uh, not the Jets, the Kings. Center? Depth. Definitely center. So I, I, that's where I think you have to have McDavid and Dreisaitl separate. Because if you they if, command that, now. well, because if you then go and and they find a way to I, I, like contain would be the best thing you could do. Yeah, contain. How easy is it for them the rest of the way when they have that center depth to go? Okay, you guys are gonna throw McDavid and Leon at us once. Yeah, and then they go off and we then have with our center depth have to deal with the rest. We got that. Yeah, I think you have to have them separate so they know. Okay, McDavid's gonna be on the ice for twenty minutes. Leon's gonna be on for twenty minutes, and we've got to deal with those through two lines. Yeah, and then deal with the rest. And and even if. You load up. Now with with Edmonton's lineup, even if you load up McDavid dry saddle, I'm not saying they're going to, but even if you did, hypothetically, you have so many options at center with those two on the top line stacked up. You can go Henrique at center on the second line. There's probably people going, oh, that doesn't sound great, but this is a guy who had a 50-point season. This is a guy who's effective. Is it flashy? Fa flashy, pardon me. No, not necessarily. And then McLeod's been all right. Not as uh, much finish as you'd want late in the season, but you can you can move some pieces, right? You can move Nugent Hopkins to center. You could have Henrik third line center, move McLeod to wing. There's some different things that you can tinker with that I think the Oilers could adapt on the fly and and throw different looks at the Kings if you want to stack up McDavid and Dreisaitl. So, Cozy, like, I... I'm at the point personally, and I know we like to to plan ahead, but I'm at the point now. It's like, all right, whatever Chris Knobloch does, let's see how it goes. And then, you know, if it's not working quickly, he switches it. And it's just like, all right, we'll react to the lines. Like, I think, you know, it's natural instinct to to rip into lines and hypothesize how they're going to do. And that's uh, part of the juices flowing at this time of year. Let's get to the ST Flyway keyword. Right here, get your phones out. 780-218-9999 is what you want to be texting Hag to. Hag, as in Nicholas Hag of the Vegas Golden Knights. Ooh. We're into the names portion of my uh, keywords. I'm not going to lie. There's uh... Actually, there's not that many more names specifically. Uh, the Noon Show has names the rest of the way. I will tell you that right now. What do we have tomorrow for but Hello Hockey? I'm not saying. Can but I see? You could take a look. Yeah, don't uh, say that. Hag, H A G U E, 780-218-9999. That's what you want to text in to get to the keyword for EST. It's the names. Well, I shouldn't have said that part there, but I, I related it to the sport you cover with that show. It makes sense. That's it's it's not the morning show one today, which I got completely wrong. That's okay. That was fun. I was not happy with that one. Did everybody spell it right? Probably not. I have no idea. I was actually surprised. I don't think anyone called me on it. Because it made no sense. Well, yeah. It doesn't make sense. Eh. Garoppolo is not part of 
Garoppolo. The Raiders anymore. So that should have been called out a lot more for that. Uh, hang, Jimmy though, G. is the keyword for the oil stream. 780-218-9999. Paris Jewelers inbox to get into uh, the draw for the oil stream today. Zacticum or YTT will give someone a call in the next 10 minutes or so. So keep your phone on as well. We'd love to talk with you on the air, but get those messages in right now to 780-218-9999. This is the oil stream on Edmonton Sports Talk, EdmontonSportsTalk.com, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, as well as those watching on YouTube. The camera's in just the worst spot for, for the change I had to make. There. Oh, yeah. You're That's why I was boy. standing up there. But uh, got the reset in there. And uh, it's Matt Awanek, Tom Gazzola with you here uh, on the oil stream. When you look at the rest of the NHL playoffs, yes. what series stands out to you? Ooh, Which one excites I, you the most? Here's one that might fly under the radar a little bit because we're so focused on the I Western Conference, the naturally same. so. Tampa, Florida. Yes. Let's go. Fight each other yes. every single game. Beat the living snot out of each other, as uh, Belzy would put it. Make the defenseman kiss glass every time you chip the puck in. I like that this rivalry has uh, erupted, and I think this is going to be a great series that will be a great primer for... It'll set up the day of hockey because we'll see it early in the day yep. out west here, and then it'll just get you ramped up for whatever game you're going to be watching. Probably the Oilers games, obviously, but uh, I like Tampa, Florida to get the juices flowing. I think we're in for a great series. Finalists back-to-back -back years of the Stanley Cups meeting? Oh. Aren't they? Yeah. The Avs beat the, Av or the Lightning, the Lightning didn't right. they? Yeah. And last year, the Panthers. Like the Oilers, we yep. say, were the team that lost to the eventual Stanley Cup champs. Right. I think those two teams... Did not think of did that, that for the last couple of years. I think the valid. Lightning are the team for me that if I had to go sleeper pick for the Stanley Cup winning it this year, it'd be the Lightning. Just because they they got that oh. first round exit last year. They actually got some rest for once. Like Oilers 1990. And now this is the, maybe the final hurrah with Stamkos and all that. And they go out, they knock off the Panthers, and then they go meet the Boston Bruins or the Toronto Maple Leafs. And maybe this is the run that the Lightning have. They're well coached. They got a great coach. They got the goalie. Yep. Um, they still have Hedman. Yep. They've got potentially the heart winner this year. Yes. Kucherov and monster season. Hey, Stamkos had a 40 goal year. Yeah. So that's, that's the series. I'm, I'm, that was the one. Yeah. That's a good one. That's the one I like. I think every series like Preds and Canucks, I'm intrigued to see if, well, what the Canucks could look like, but it's not that sexy to me. No. Give me right. Avs, Jets and give me stars, Golden Knights. I'm looking at Boston, Toronto. Maddie, I'm going to say it. I think Boston's a pretender. Ooh, 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 ooh. A quarter of their season went to overtime. Yeah, so they're and still overtime. And they benefited from the loser. Well, I guess three point. on three, yeah. 15 times they lost an OT or a shootout. I think Boston is a pretender. What do you make with the Leafs, though? Are, are the Leafs able to uh, knock off the Bruins? I think whoever comes out of Toronto-Boston loses yeah. in the second round regardless. I think oh, that Toronto could beat Boston. But Boston versus Florida would be interesting because Florida's the team that knocked off Boston last year. I think Florida year. would do it again, yeah. even mm -hmm. quicker. Seriously. Rangers-Caps is... Eh. Rangers is going to win that. I'm I, I just, it's always nice watching games at MSG. There's just something about it's seeing games played at MSG. Phenomenal arena. Um... Islanders, Islanders, Hurricanes. It's just what could, what is that Islanders team going to look like with Patty Waugh in the playoffs, running the bench? You Angry. know, Angry. yeah, Angry. He he doesn't like. He scowls a lot, does he not? What the one year he had with the Avs where they were at the top? Are the Rangers um, the least the respected round. Presidents Trophy winners in recent years? I feel like we're not giving them a lot of clout. We as in fans, media, everybody. Is that because they play out east and no one cares about the east this year? We're looking at how strong the west is. I don't know. I'll take the Rangers over the Panthers. Sure. I'm not sold on the Panthers. I know they got there last year, but that felt a little more lightning in a bottle to me. They didn't have a great stretch drive. It's going to be... Uh, it, I don't know. They, they're, be. There are a lot of really good matchups in the playoffs this year. I will say that. And... Um, yeah, Oilers, Kings will be fascinating, but Stars, Golden Knights, Jets, Abs in the Central, those two are going to be just monster series to watch. And then I'm with you. Lightning and Panthers will be something. And if the Leafs do lose, though, it's just... 
It's fun. It's a. It's fun. It's a belly laugh. It's nice. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, it's that's a shame. That's that's awful. Yeah. That's all. Watch. This is the year they go on this massive run because none of us are expecting it right. out of them. Granted, if Edmonton loses, a lot of the hockey world will be like, "Oh, that's too I, bad." Well, I will say this, but uh, portions of this hour brought to you by the Boston Pizza Playoff Menu. Now available featuring the halftime, square footer, a flight of wings, the triple play platter, and the new Chipotle chicken quesadillas. Fuel your fandom at Boston Pizza. Uh, Tommy and Dust will be at the Boston Pizza in St. Albert's uh, May 15? 15th, I believe it is. Yeah. Uh, they'll be there for the oil stream. Um, if the Oilers lost to the Golden Knights, people would have been upset in the first round, but there would have been a little more acceptance. I think that's fair. Kings, there's no acceptance to that. The Oilers get Go knocked out by the Kings. People are people are going to be your back just got in the shot there, Trev, as oh, you're crossing by. Go. Just got in there. Uh that one there's no excuses. And there will no, be there I will agree. be such anger. Blow it if up. The Oilers fall to the Kings in the first I know. Round. I know. I don't think it'll happen. You never know. It is the postseason. There is a motivated LA team. Um Buckle up, man. And and the texter that sent it in earlier nailed it on the head. It's never easy. The Oilers never take the 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 past path of least resistance. But was that year the Kings won where they won like so many series quick? Was got, that twenty fourteen? Their that cup run in twenty fourteen. They were a machine. Let's see if I can find that. Twenty twelve was like the whoa topsy turvy, and then twenty fourteen it was just like bam, 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 bam. No, 2014, they won 4-3, 4-3, They dominated. They, they, they won a lot of late ones in yes. that year. So then what happened in 11-12? The road... Yeah, I feel like that one was the boom, That boom, was the boom. one where it was boom, 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 boom? 4-1, 4 one 4 2 And the 4-2 Stanley Cup final, they were up 3-0 in that series, lost two games, and ultimately won. Right. They were just rolling in that one. Uh, first series, they were up 3-0, lost game 4-1, then game 5, swept... And then same thing up. Yeah, every series they went up three zero. Right in that one, it was just absolutely. Uh, could the Oilers just kind of do that? At least, at just least do it one for series. Once. One series, and that's where I say if they win game one on Monday, it's short series against the LA Kings. When they did it against the Ducks in two thousand six, yeah. it was like, oh my goodness! Don't do it in the conference finals. You want you want to be don't have the rest uh, and yeah. rust debate. We don't need that. They had do it in the days. first or the second round or the Stanley Cup Finals. Do it in any of those three rounds. Leave it off the conference. Do you finals. remember when they clinched? They flew to New York, used the Rangers practice facilities to get out of Edmonton for a few days to get ready for the first round. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be sticking they around. You okay over there, Trev? Are okay. you all right? Did you drink all the birdie juice? Oh, no. My goodness. I know it's Friday. Uh, let's get to the EST of flyaway qualifier for today. Uh, Trev, who do we got on the line? We've got Nick on the line today. Nick, congratulations. You are in the mix for the trip to Las Vegas. Have you been to Vegas before? Uh, no, I haven't. You haven't? Oh, all right. Uh, what excites you about possibly going to Vegas? Uh, mostly the gambling and, uh, I don't know, just to check out the strip and stuff. Smoking cigarettes indoors again? <laughs> no, definitely not that. Yeah, good, get a good, good Dutch man. master cigar. Yeah, they're like eleven those. bucks for a pack of four. <laughs> yeah. They're very nice. Uh, <laughs> Oilers, Kings. Who wins? How many games? I got Oilers and six. All Love right. It. Love it. Well, congratulations. You are now into the mix. Uh, keep your phone on next Friday during the morning show because if you're the winner, the boys will give you a call, let you know that you're off to Vegas for the first time. Okay, hey, awesome. Thank you, guys. And there's our latest qualifier. Like I said, next chance to qualifier tomorrow on Hello Hockey right here in Edmonton Sports Talk. It's uh, the last qualifying opportunity on Hello Hockey. Uh, all thanks to our partners, Fly YEG, the Edmonton International Airport. Over 50 nonstop flights to your sports destination. Check them out, flyyeg.com. Or our, their other partners, the LV CBA out in Las Vegas. Um, Trev's having a good Friday, it looks like. He is having Thank a good Thank you for time. just jumping by there. All he's right. he's having a good one. Um, we only got a couple minutes left. Yeah, this, this was good. Oh, this really? was, I'm glad we had the birdie juice. It was awesome, on, and it was neat. Get, it was good yep. getting Schmitty in here. Like uh, we had Scott Laurie talking about uh, the six, six o'clock or lager, lager, which was which great. Alley Cat is the official beer of the outdoor com outdoors. Uh, 
Great Outdoors Comedy Festival. I got to get that all right. Great Outdoors Comedy Festival, uh, July 12th through the 14th yeah. out at Kingsman. Uh, keep it locked, Edmonton Sports Talk. Over the next few months, we've got VIP tables to give away. Awesome. Uh, but if you are heading off to the Great Outdoors Comedy Festival, Alley Cat will be the official beer provider there, which includes the 6 O'Clocker Lager. Our first big event with the 6 O'Clocker Lager. I am that very we're excited be about this. This is uh, fantastic, a testament to how good the beer is, the fine folks at Alley Cat, and then everybody that has indulged and enjoyed a six o'clock or lager or two because it's been great. A uh, couple of texts here. Mike outside of Edmonton says, Corey Perry does a few dad talks with the boys. We have this. Sean says, Maddie, I followed you on X. He has a question he's going to get at you uh, in regard to, I think, something you brought up earlier on the Hangout. So okay. that's just a little bit of housekeeping. But I. Are we do? Is there going to be a big inflatable six o'clock or lager? Uh, this wasn't a, a chat. I, I think that's what they're trying to do. I, I didn't get that. the chance to chat with Sarah a little more on if that's actually what's going to happen and, and stuff. So. And twelve ninety nine four packs at Sobeys and Safeway Liquor. Uh, if you want through the playoffs to, for the entirety of the playoffs. That's the, actually it's till June thirtieth. I think it is. That's awesome. So it's like from as of yesterday through till June thirtieth. Twelve ninety nine. Boom. Go to Sobeys Safeway Liquor. Get your six o'clock or loggers for the playoff run. And, um, and Schmidt giving us a little taste, literally, and then uh, all of our listeners and, and viewers uh, an idea of what the birdie juice is going to be. It, it's, it's tasty. It was fun. It was, and I like the mindset. It's like, hey, you're on the chorus. It could be bogey juice, whatever. But it's, it's, hey, it's a quick yeah. shot of this is good. I need to turn my game around. Get me the EST birdie juice. And you could have some sitting on a patio at home. You could have that one in a lot of different places. That would be deadly. Uh, NHL playoffs gets going tomorrow. NBA playoffs after the play-in tonight gets going tomorrow. We're into that that stretch run of Let's spring. Go. Not much could be better. Uh, this was fun, Tommy. We'll do it again on Monday, but you will be at the rink. I yes. will be here. Yes. And we'll be previewing game one. Dennis Bernstein is back as our Kings insider for a third straight postseason. Such a good guy. We'll try to get him in on the hangout. It's not a playoffs without Dennis Bernstein talking with Tommy on the pregame show. Uh, thanks okay. for tuning in to the Oil Stream and Edmonton Sports Talk all week. Uh, Hello Hockey tomorrow, 10 o'clock right here on Edmonton Sports Talk with Tommy, Sean Bell, David Pagnot, I'm assuming, as always, will be on the show. Uh, and then we're back on Monday with live programming, 6 o'clock. It is Gager. It is Lieutenant Eric with the Nielsen Show. We'll be getting you set for playoff hockey, finally, here in Edmonton. Thanks for tuning in to the Oil Stream here on Edmonton Sports Talk. Enjoy your weekend.